Thank you. Thank you, Bob, for that kind introduction. I want to tell you, Fox News offered me the option of being here or in Kandahar, and so I'm grateful for the opportunity to be with you today. I'm here as a representative of uh, Obamacare because I just heard this morning that it's your responsibility, you young people here, to buy into the program now to help old people like me, so get with it. <laughs> right. It's been 13 years since I started covering and reporting on and documenting what our American heroes do. And I've described them, and I mean it, as the finest military force the world has ever known. Our military, during 57 embeds in the shadows of the Hindu Kush, in Mesopotamia, Africa, the Philippines, the Persian Gulf, the Indian Ocean, is literally all of them are the stars of what I have done in my documentaries, my reports, and my books. And they really are the bravest and best of a generation. They are, as I describe them to be, America's heroes. I like to remind young people especially that heroes are not the people who catch passes in the end zone or set new Olympic records, or even those who appear on comic books and creations of television in a spandex suit and a cape. In fact, my heroes wear flak jackets and combat boots and flight suits, and they go to work in the most difficult and dangerous places on the planet Earth. Real heroes are selfless. They put themselves at risk for the benefit of others. That is the classical definition of a hero. Since 9-11-01, 2.4 million young Americans have forfeited the comforts of home, They've absented themselves from the affection of loved ones, and they've gone into harm's way like you see on that screen. For the very first time since the American Revolution, every single person serving in uniform is a volunteer. It's never happened since. It's happening now. Today's troops are the brightest, best educated, trained, led, and equipped military force the world has ever known, and they rarely get the accolades that they deserve. Today's troops didn't volunteer to fight for gold or colonial conquest or, quite frankly, the international community. They volunteered to protect us from an enemy that is dying to kill us. And they literally put themselves at risk every single day. And they and their families have made extraordinary sacrifices for all of us. They deserve better than a commander-in-chief garbed as a Nobel laureate, trotting around the world, kowtowing to foreign leaders, and apologizing for America. They deserve, they deserve a commander-in-chief who knows America, the greatest force for good the world has ever known, has no thing ever to apologize for, not once. The members of our armed forces and their families deserve better than being treated like laboratory rats in some radical social experiment. The people of Ukraine, the people of Ukraine are this very minute paying the terrible price for America's leadership deficit disorder and the Obama Organization's utopian rush to unilateral disarmament. That's where we're headed. We don't need a head of state who guts our defenses and draws phony red lines with a pink crayon. Yeah, I did say that. Our leader should be admired and trusted by our allies, and if not feared, at least respected by our adversaries. Between now and 2016, we, when we hire a new commander-in-chief, we need a majority in Congress who will insist on the rule of law in Washington. I want to make this very personal to the young people in here. You and your children are threatened by a mountain of debt, unconstrained spending, ever higher taxes, and a headlong rush to socialism. Our Congress must hold accountable an administration 
that offers the protections of our Constitution to our enemies, but strips those same protections from our own people. We need a that will stop this administration from perpetrating frontal assaults on free enterprise, private property, and the civil liberties enshrined in our Bill of Rights. We need a Congress that will use the power of the purse to defend our national sovereignty, our borders, and stop the Obama team from suborning the wealth of our nation to a globalist agenda that says we can't use our own natural energy resources. The Obamacare debacle is just the tip of the incompetence and corruption rampant in Washington. But we, the people, the first three words of our Constitution, can demand accountability for a string of horrific scandals and cover-ups, starting with Benghazi, the IRS enemies lists, and government spying on American citizens and reporters. We, the people, is not a political slogan. It is a commitment, a way of life, and it must be if we're going to improve things. I say it's a commitment. A commitment isn't just what we say. Commitments are what we do. The framers who crafted our Constitution were counting on we, the people, to hold government accountable. Some say that we must ignore social issues like the definition of marriage, the sanctity of life, religious freedoms. I say those are not social issues. They are deeply moral and spiritual issues, and they should be part of America's elections. In the 1850s, in the 1850s, a political party was born on the idea of a great moral issue, human bondage, the abolition of slavery in America. If we, as conservatives, cease to be a place where people of faith and those who believe in strong moral values can come, we will cease to be a political force in America. America's greatness was founded on the shoulders of people who staked their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor on a creator who endowed us with inalienable rights to life, liberty, and its pursuit of happiness. He also said, we have responsibilities. And so, I ask you, I ask you to take on the task of inspiring our countrymen, to dismiss and reject ideas like unilateral disarmament, to achieve peace, to try to spend our way out of debt, and reject the idea of regulating our way to prosperity, or surrendering our sovereignty to secure our nation's future. I urge you to make a commitment today to assert the moral authority of a free people. The next election is just 243 days away. Make a commitment here at this great CPAC conference to elect a Congress that will preserve America's freedoms, the opportunity that our nation has become great and offering others that will stand up to the, for the liberties granted to us by our Creator and enshrined in our Constitution. We owe that much to the young Americans who put their lives at risk for us. The President I was blessed to serve told us that we have a rendezvous with destiny and asked us to commit to ensure that we remain a nation of, by, and for the people that will not perish from the earth the words of that first Republican president who lifted those words from the Wycliffe Bible. If we the people want America to remain the land of the free, we must make a commitment here and show friends, domestic and otherwise, and adversaries, both here and abroad, that we are not just the land of the free. We are still the home of the brave. Come visit Freedom Alliance. Our booth is outside. I ask you to join us in helping America's heroes. God bless you and thank you for being here. Semper Fi.